in Kyoto, Japan. The 122 pound belt is on the line in the WBA Super Bantam Weight Division. Bethel Duran alongside Steve Kim and Steve. The tail of the tape for this one tonight. Well, they're both 27 years old. The road warrior Daniel Roman weighed in at 121.4. Once again, as you mentioned, this is for the Super Bantamweight title. This bout is being contested at a weight limit of 122 pounds as we take a look at the champion defending his belt in front of his home audience. In front of his home audience. I doubt there are any Mexicans in the crowd tonight for Danny Roman, who has traveled across the Pacific in his first opportunity to win a world title. Ring announcer is inside the ring in Kyoto, Japan. See them bringing in the crowd. It's a different environment in Japan. There you see the kid from born in Inglewood, California, 27 year old. They call him the baby face assassin, Danny Roman, with a record of 23, 2 and 1. Eddie Gonzalez in his corner. Manager, trainer, a Maywood boxing. You see the smile on his face, Steve. It has to be a big, big opportunity, and it must be some butterflies. I talked to Roman about two weeks before this fight, before he took the 16-hour trek to Japan, and I asked him, is this your first trip out of the country? And he said, yes. And it's certainly a business excursion. Had some early problems in terms of their lodging and during their time here in Ryoto, Japan but they are settled in and ready to win a world title. Roman actually went very early, finished up his sparring uh, in Japan to make sure he said, you know, can't trust who they're going to give you to spar out here. Why don't you take somebody familiar with you? He took Isaac Zarate with him. And there you see the champion walking into the ring in Kyoto, Japan, Shun Kubo. What do we know about Kubo, Steve? Well, Kubo is a South Paul tall, lanky fighter, won his title against Nehomar Sermenyo, knockout in 10 rounds in April 9th in Osaka, Japan. One note, he should be very comfortable in these surroundings, Beto. All 12 of his fights coming in have been in the land of the rising sun. The World the Boxing Association 122 pound belt on the line, Kubo. You're right, he is a tall fighter. That's South Paul stance. That's why they use Zarate, who fights with uh, Thompson Boxing out of San Pedro. He wanted to make sure that they had somebody familiar with him. And I can only imagine what it's like to leave Inglewood, what it's like to leave Southern California, but to go to Japan where you don't know anybody. And I think that the Roman camp made a very smart decision. Most fighters going on the road, they generally leave about six to seven days before the day of the fight. Roman and his camp decided to go about a week and a half to two weeks really just to get acclimated to the time zone difference and I believe his body clock should be set ready and prepared to fight that man walking into the venue now. 16 hour flight you do whatever it takes if you're trying to win a world title and that's what Danny Roman is trying to do tonight as he tries to take it away from Shun Kubo another fighter who's 27 years old this arena in Japan. It, it's a different vibe in Japan. It's not your Rockets where they're throwing everything at you. It's not like where you're in Tijuana and they're going to just let you know that they hear everything about what you're doing or whether they cheer you. It's a respectful, educated man. I would say the word to describe a Japanese boxing audience is serene. I still remember February 10th, 1990 as perhaps the biggest upset in boxing history. It took place at the Tokyo Dome. Buster Douglas upsetting Mike Tyson. As a lot was going on, you would have thought that really a chess match was taking place inside that ring, but certainly a pretty good audience tonight uh, to see Danny Roman challenge Shun Kubo for the WBA title. Kubo inside the ring. Danny Roman, you see Mr. Ken Thompson, founder of Thompson Boxing Promotions in the early 2000s, and now they've developed former title fighters. They've had Tim Bradley. Uh, Thompson Boxing also bringing kids to the forefront here. They have an opportunity tonight with Danny Roman. And speaking of Mr. Thompson and Alex Campanovo, who are now at attention for the national anthem, this is their third title shot in the land of the rising sun. Juan Carlos Burgos came up short against Ozumi Hasegawa. And just recently, Carlos Carlson lost to Shinsuke Yamanaka for a Bantamweight title. So is the third time the charm for Thompson Boxing? And we will find out tonight 12 rounds scheduled in the WBA belt on the line, 122 pound division. Now you see, that might be the only people that Danny Roman has on his side tonight. Oh, Alex Campanova also. But there you see his corner strong for him. 
playing the anthem in Kyoto, Japan. What are you must be thinking right now? Well, I think there's going to be a lot of serene. You know, listen, the fighter trains thousands of hours, really, for about 45 minutes worth of work, and this is something that he has certainly worked for his whole life. And I, I think Roman's been one of the more interesting careers uh, locally that we've had. He started his career back in 2010 in Beto. This was not an immediate success story. He was actually two of one and one, four fights in. There's a lot of fighters. If they drop a fight or two that early, they generally become opponents or taken to the scrap heap. Really, a lot of perseverance from that young man who now is on the precipice of having a world title. Daniel Roman started boxing at the age of eight because of soccer. He had a soccer ball taken away from him in elementary, and let's just say he was fighting for the ball and ended up on the wrong side of it. His dad and his uncle took him to the gym to defend himself. Forget soccer, here he is fighting for a world title. Steve, you mentioned him losing early on in his career. He lost to a Japanese fighter at a, on Doubletree in Ontario. Lost that fight, and that fighter, where is he now? He ended up with a record of six, one and one. Dan Roman persevered over that and here he is fighting for a world title. And then you see El Mexicanito, Tomoki Kameda was in attendance. A couple of other big shot Japanese fighters are in attendance tonight for Kubo and Danny Roman. And we take a look at the record of Danny Roman. The only other blemish on his mark in terms of a loss is against Juan Reyes, an eight round decision that he lost in 2013. Since that point, Beto, he's on a 14 fight winning streak. Certainly a fighter that's built up a lot of momentum. They're at that only, his first loss in 2011 to Takashi Okada, a split decision in his <laughs> professional fight. And his second fight was a draw. So it's not like people were knocking down Danny Roman's door in the beginning. Like, oh, okay, we got to get this guy. No, it was definitely a work of progress. And here he is tonight. That's pretty cool, though. The perseverance to go through it. Not a household name. Not many people giving him an opportunity. Always coming in as an opponent is Danny Roman. And here he is fighting for the world title. I mean, I think there has to be some nervousness as we just saw the champion, Kubo. Again, he just won his world title. This is his first title defense. And in speaking to Alex Campanova, the general manager and matchmaker uh, of Thompson Boxing before they traveled, he felt as though that while he's a quality fighter, he didn't know if he was of the quality of the past guys that they faced on the road like Hasegawa and Yamanaka. Kubo started his professional career in 2013. But you're right, Steve, all of his fights have been in his native land. So from Inglewood, losing her high school, Parents have five kids total. Danny Roman being the professional fighter. Parents with roots in Guerrero, Mexico. Guerrero means you're a warrior. And that's what we're going to see tonight. Danny Roman, you see the team with Roman jacket. That might be the only guy in attendance. That's a decomp. His own photographer he brought with him. That's pretty cool. When you bring your own photographer and you bring your own sparring, because you know <laughs> they're not going to do anything to help you make it easier. So looking at all the pomp and circumstances going inside the ring and the various luminaries and corner men and ring announcers and referees, the local Roman made it very clear that he spoke to him at the Legend Boxing Gym about two and a half weeks before he took off to Japan. When it's all said and done, when the bell rings, you touch him up, there's only three people in that ring and one of them is the referee. There you see, shaking gloves with Mr. Thompson. Oh, Eddie Gonzalez ready to go. The baby face assassin. He does have that look. Major 27. People gave him an opportunity to even get to this level. Had a fight in an eliminator with Daniel Roman. And that was in Atlantic City. And Beto, keep this in mind. Danny Roman with the record of 22, 2, and 1 has 25 professional battles under his belt. He might be the more seasoned fighter despite not being the champion. Many of the fighters in Japan, they get moved very quickly, especially at the lower weight levels. We remind you, Shun Kubo, this is just his 13th professional fight as they are about to touch him up, Beto. Roman got here after knocking out Adam Lopez, the Texan, in a WBA eliminator. That was live on Showtime in Atlantic City. And most people were saying, well, Daniel Roman, no, no, Lopez is the big name. Roman came out with a victory that night. And that was his 22nd victory, as you can see on the graphic. And that actually put him in line with the WBA to be the mandatory challenger for this title as we begin round number one. This fight was finalized in the summer. Here we are, 
Ready to go, Daniel Roman with the blue gloves against the Southpaw Shun Kubo. Bethel Duran, Steve Kim with you tonight as the WBA 122 pound belt is on the line. Daniel Roman started his career, mentioned earlier, because he got beat up fighting for a soccer ball. After that, he's the one been doing the beating up. Went to the sport of boxing, loves it. Actually was introduced to the sport by his father and his uncle, and they took him to the late Chato Robles, Manny Robles' father. And that's where he learned back at the old Hoover Street gym. But the one thing's immediately obvious is that Kubo has a size advantage in terms of rank, uh, length and height. So one thing Roman's gonna have to do is be able to close that gap. Noticing his footwork, uh, when you face a southpaw, the general rule of thumb is you want that front foot on the outside of your opponent and just focusing in on that left foot. He certainly made a concerted effort to be shaded over to his left side. And then you see the audience in Japan, it looks like they have their hands folded and they're very quiet. That's exactly how the Japanese fan is, where they wait to the end of the round to make noise. It's surreal, as some of the fighters have said when they've gone over there. You, uh, you experienced that, right? No, I really haven't, but I've talked to people that are there. It is a different atmosphere. As I said, it's very serene. It's almost like as if you're boxing in front of the Wimbledon crowd during oh, the no. middle of the summer. Oh, it, it's, no. it's not exactly the StubHub Center or the Grand Olympic Auditorium. Very tactical round number one halfway through. Both men kind of jousting from the outside. Let's see if Roman can continue to work his way inside. I think distance and spacing are going to be absolutely key for both fighters. Wimbledon crowd is definitely not the people at the double tree where Daniel <laughs> Roman has cut his teeth. Nobody's bringing you nachos or getting upset with you. With Thompson Boxing as their home base in Ontario, California. Daniel, Danny Roman moving around nicely. It's a kid who goes all over Southern California to get sparring. Maywood Boxing is his home base. But you've seen him at the Rocket Carson, you've seen him at Legends in Norwalk. Wherever you can get the work, that's where you are. And you know, in the Maywood boxing, there's also a lot of young Japanese fighters that go there who cut their own teeth there. And Beto, about five seconds ago, there was a nice little left uppercut. That is a sneakily effective punch against a southpaw. Right now, Roman's actually setting a pretty good foundation, closing the gap very, very slowly, working his way in. What's been a pretty good round number one for both men. I don't think a lot has separated Roman or Shu Kubo. Roman in his first world championship fight, Kubo defending his belt for the first time. 12 round scheduled in the super bantamweight weight division. A good left hook from Daniel Roman as Kubo in his backyard. He's in Kyoto, Japan tonight. Trying to maintain his WBA belt as Roman comes out with a solid first round. And we take a look at some of the action from round number one, Beto. Kubo with a left right there. And for much of the round, I thought he controlled the distance and the spacing. But later in round number one, you see Roman. This is where he wants to be, Beto. Nice and close. There's a right hook to the body. And I think he may have followed that up with that left uppercut I spoke about. Second round of action. Danny Roman, orthodox fighter. And one of the things you always have to worry about with the southpaw, Steve, is that different style, the clash of heads, and also how do you get into him? Well, one thing you're gonna have to do is you have to consistently jab a southpaw. Everyone says you can't throw a jab against a southpaw. A lot of trainers believe that's not true. You may not land a jab as consistently against as you would an orthodox fighter, but that jab has to be more or less a range finder and a distance killer at that point. And you see Roman looks a little bit more comfortable here in round number two. And one thing I notice about Kubo, does not have a lot of head movement. Yeah, very upright, does not really bend at the waist, which makes him a little bit more of a stationary target. Roman definitely moving at the waist. That's just that old school drill where they have the rope across between two poles going side to side. You're right, Steve. Kubo not looking too comfortable here early in the fight. He's back in the rain a lot. Good shot landed by Roman. Good left from the Japanese fighter Kubo. 
But Roman sticking right there with him, moving side to side with those blue gloves. Trying to get to the outside with that left hook is Roman. Left hook, the body shot. Well, you'd see the, the distance that he can create with the lanky arms. Well, I think he's, he's a distance and spacing fighter, but Roman in round number two, I think there's a subtle shift here. He's not quickening the pace really that much, but he's being very subtle with it. He's got to steadily build momentum and continue to work his way forward. Doing a nice job in round number two, actually making Kubo much more uncomfortable here in round number two. I think Roman's the one controlling the pace and the aggressiveness. That's something that the judges base on when they're scoring. Body shot again for Roman, using that left hook. Going to the body again this time with the right. Keep this in mind, Beto. When you are facing a southpaw and you're chest to chest and you have proper distance, it doesn't really matter. At that point, that southpaw advantage goes away from in close. So Roman has to keep pressing forward and get right on the chest of Kubo. And there's a good right hand. Now, he's doing a nice job, Beto, on this round of not just relying on the jab, he's actually throwing a lead left hook to the body and straight right hands over the top. Two key punches trainers will talk about that are circuit breakers against left-handed boxers. Right hand landed by Roman. Here with 30 seconds to go in the second round. It's scheduled for 12, the WBA title on the line in Kyoto, Japan. Beto, I think this has been a good second for Roman, who's found his groove, and that is a common theme among fighters on the road, that once you get hit once or twice, it just becomes like any other fight, whether you're in Ontario or Antarctica. Well, they're in Japan, a long way from Antarctica, <laughs> and the ring is starting to heat up between Danny Roman, Sean Kubo, the 122-pound champion, and that'll do it two rounds. And then you see the Thompson Boxing social media accounts, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, the YouTube, go and check everything out. If you want to go back and see some of the fights from Omega Products and Corona, or if you want to see what happened at the Thompson Boxing Shows in Ontario, Sacramento, all on the Thompson Boxing YouTube page and also on their social media. And you see the highlight from the last couple of rounds, Steve. And this has been the story thus far, steady pressure. And right there, eschewing the jab is Roman leading with that left hook. But that's the danger of not coming behind that stick, is that you are going to put yourself in harm's way defensively as he got caught there coming in. Third round in Japan. Danny Roman went to Lusinger High School at the same time Russell Westbrook was there. He's a couple years younger than him. Like, I remember him. Also, Zardi Gardis, who played for the LA Galaxy and Team USA. So that's cool. At one point, had three professional athletes at the same time. Danny Roman trying to make his name known for himself in the boxing world. The hardcore fans know him. But right now, a chance to open up a lot of eyes, especially in the 122-pound division. Beto, just a couple of seconds ago, he landed a lead left hook again to the body in a right hand over the top. And you can see the head movement to really tell you where he's going. When he dips over to the left, it'll be the left hook. When he slides back to the other side, it'll be a right hand over the top. He's got a real good rhythm going here in round number three. Roman doesn't look intimidated at all. Good right hand landed by Danny Roman, the baby face assassin. Another solid right, good left uppercut by the 27-year-old from Guerrero, Mexico, left up the stairs, uppercut again from Roman. Bringing on the pressure here in the third. Beto, he is really pressuring him, as you said. You can see him now shifting gears, and he is starting to make Kubo really back up and uncomfortable. This is exactly the type of pacing that he needs on the road. Kubo looks like he's the opponent tonight, as Roman very comfortable in the center of the ring. Another uppercut, this time with the left. Beto, I remember that fight January 20th in Atlantic City. Danny Roman was actually the B-side. Very, very little was known about him on the East Coast as he goes to work once again on the inside. Adam Lopez, 16-0-1, was thought about as the prospect on his way up, and he absolutely dominated him over nine rounds to a point where Ronnie Shields, veteran trainer, had to throw in the town. But one thing I'm sensing about Roman, he only has nine knockouts coming into this fight, but he's a stronger puncher than I think his record indicates. There's a lot of oomph 
especially on that right hand and that lead left uppercut. You and I have both seen Roman star in Southern California circles. He's gone up to some of the best names in the area. And when Roman is sparring, it is almost like a fight. He goes in and he works. And he's not like a guy who's like sparring, he's picking his partners. Saying, oh, no, no, we're only gonna do four today. You know, this guy knows his role and he comes to work every single time and you see the results right now. Roman's doing a great job of layering his punches. It's not just one at a time. It's also a left hook followed by a right hand. And you see him doubling up the right hand and then the lead left uppercut. He is weaving some beautiful combinations against a tall, upright southpaw. And really, you can see how uncomfortable Kubo is here in round number three. Two has not been first at all this fight. Dan Roman landing that right whenever he wants. And Beto, the bigger right. problem is he, he's not only not first, oftentimes he's not even last. Or second, or third. <laughs> and Danny Roman bringing it on. Another solid round for Danny, the babyface assassin, Roman. Inglewood, you're looking proud tonight. There is less than one hundredth of an inch of motor oil protecting your car's engine. Friction and heat causes engine oil to experience thermal breakdown, weakening its ability to protect the engine and its parts. Lucas Heavy Duty Oil Stabilizer is specially formulated to resist thermal breakdown, protect vital engine parts, and extend the life of your engine. It also stops smoking, knocking, and oil consumption in worn engines. Lucas Heavy Duty Oil Stabilizer, keep that engine alive. There you see Danny Roman in Kyoto, Japan. Three rounds in the books, looking solid so far. He got that wet towel just to keep him cool. And Beto, they must like the way things are going. I think after a relatively close first inning, second and third have been dominated by Danny Roman, who's just simply gotten to work on the inside. And that's been one of the key punches is the lead left uppercut against the southpaw, and it's been a two-fisted attack from Danny Roman, who has attacked the body with both the left hook and the right hand right down the middle. Bethel Durant, Steve Kim, watching Danny Roman and Sean Kubo. Kubo defending his belt for the first time. He has the WBA version of the 122-pound title. Roman, first time in Japan, first time fighting for a world title. Look at solid through three. Beto, I think there has to be a sense of urgency. You would figure from Kubo, obviously he has the home canvas advantage, but Japan, unlike other foreign locales, is actually known for being very fair to foreign and road fighters. I, I think it would be hard pressed to believe that he actually won rounds two or three. The early champion, I think, is in an early hole. You're saying they're on the up and up in Japan, huh? Generally they are. They actually take pride in the sense that they treat their fighters right. And, and, and other jurisdictions we know have bad reputations. Japan certainly is not one of them. Very honorable boxing people in that part of the world. And especially in this division, the 115, 118, 122, they have so many fighters, loaded young fighters in Japan. Boy, this is some real pressure fighting by Danny Roman. You know, I spoke to Alex Campanova before this fight, and I said, how ready is Roman for a battle like this? And he said, Steve, his last 10 fights, I matched him tough. He believes he's gotten the proper amount of professional resistance. And Roman, to me, looks like he doesn't care where this fight is. He looks very, very relaxed. He's just simply put on the hard hat, and he has gotten to work, and he is really grinding and chipping away to the body of Kubo. And there's another good left uppercut, Beto. Chipping away to the jaw of Kubo. And Roman just following around Kubo, who's just trying to create some kind of space, a chance to breathe. Hasn't had a chance to do that since the opening bell. And you don't leave the double tree unless you can fight. <laughs> it was like the Dominican baseball players. You got to hit your way off the island. You got to hit your way out of those nachos in the double tree in Ontario. Right hand again, followed by a solid left uppercut from Roman. That was some beautiful counter punching. He rolled out the left hand and they came back with his own three punch combination. This punch is on it. Uh, it's very, very evident. Look at the head movement. Kubo, again, his head is almost like a baseball on a tee. While you look at Roman, look at his shoulders, look at his back, and look at his head. A lot of movement. So he's able to flip and flip inside, and then throw short darting punches on the inside. Some beautiful work being done by young Daniel Roman. He worked just like Tony Gwynn before every Padre game, and that's it. He's teeing off on him. Good movement from Danny Roman, body work this time, as Kubo is really covering up the body. Maybe those early shots taking an effect. Finally, Kubo lands the left. It's a right from Danny Roman. 
One from Kubo, three, four from Roman. I love the variation of attack. It's either a straight right hand or sweeping right hand over the top with left hands either coming Oh, what a right from Roman. Exactly, it's a two -fifth Another attack. right. And he is just absolutely dominating this fight, Beto. Finishing the round strong, Danny Roman getting stronger as the fight goes on. Done with four in Japan. Sean Kubo, the champion in the 122 pound division. Those eyes are wide awake now, Steve. Well, I think he has to be stunned by just the sheer dominance of Danny Roman. I thought round number one could have gone either way, but the snowball is now rolling and it is coming downhill. It seems every single round since the second, Danny Roman is just simply building up momentum. And let's take a look at some of the work that he did. There's a body shot by Kubo, which he has not really done all that much. But this has been the story. Left hook leading either to the top or to the bottom, to the body, and it's been a series of right hands over the top that have really started to let Danny Roman control the tempo of this fight. Roman took a while to actually start the sport, like the sport of boxing. He was remember, eight years old, he's learning how to defend himself. And Steve, right now the scorecard, he's looking good. I thought round one was close again, but the two, three, and four, easy call for the challenger out of Los Angeles. I have it 40 to 36, Danny Roman. Since Roman lost a few years ago, he has won 14 straight. But the thing about that though, if you talk to boxing people or his promoter, anybody else, you see Roman isn't the guy who's going to be flashy, do anything for you, but in those 14 wins, he continues to improve every single outing. Well, we talk about the double tree and the incubation stage of any young fighters. Once again, cool. two-fisted combination, left hands being lighter oh, by again. right hands. Now, Kubo needs to stand and deliver, but here's the problem, Beto. That's not where he wants to be. He's relatively tall and upright. I get the sense he does not want to be in a phone booth, if you remember those things. Kubo's going to get a big memory bank right now. Is that phone booth, anything, he can't get away from Roman. He keeps going to him, digging to the body. And if Kubo wants to exchange, that's going to be very dangerous for him, as Roman is more than willing. Danny Roman right now is putting on a clinic on how to handle a southpaw inside. I see too many left-handers being able to evade right hands over the top as orthodox fighters don't make a commitment downstairs. Danny Roman realizes one thing, no matter what stance you're at, if you pound the body, it's relatively difficult to actually miss those punches. He hasn't missed much, and if he is missing, it's on purpose probably. That's how good Danny Roman is looking tonight in the fifth round, 12th round scheduled. The WBA title. Steve, in the 122 pound division, you hear some of the bigger names, you're like, uh-oh. There's some guys in there, but you got to get the belts. You say belts matter. Belts absolutely matter. And some of the other belt holders are Ray Vargas, a man that we saw a couple of weeks ago beat Ronnie Rios. Then we have Yukonori Oguni, who's also out of Japan, who has the IBF belt, and Jesse Magdaleno, who will soon be defending against Cesar Wars as the WBO title in what will be a very good fight. I believe that'll happen November 11th. And then get the presence of Guillermo Rigondeau, who I believe will probably be moving up to 130 to face Vasil Lomachenko. Uh, I get the sense Roman is gonna be two things. Number one, a very tough out, if he's able to keep this momentum. Number two, Beto, he's an entertaining fighter. Yes, he is, he brings it to you. Left, another left hook from Roman, lands it right. So you see Kubo covering up more and more of that body, exposing the chin like that. Beto, I just love what Roman has done. He has shuffled the deck. And oh, another shot. Right, see, at that time he came through with the lead left hook over the top. And other times he leaves with the right hand right down the middle. Kubo being very defensive. The world champion not looking like one. Final seconds of the fifth round. Danny Roman picking up steam. He looking stronger in Kyoto, Japan.
and the beat goes on for Danny Roman and Beto. This is what I've been talking about. One of the punches that is the traditional punch that you throw against Southpaws is the right hand over the top that leads, and you can start to see the effects on Fubo starting to get marked up around both eyes. The right eye definitely covered up. The left eye is red. Danny Roman, his name is the babyface ass. He looks exactly like it as he leads with a strong jab. Danny Roman, Inglewood, now living in South LA. A strong outing, strong performance so far through five good rounds for Roman. Roman boxed his entire life. He took one year off of boxing, tried to actually play soccer for losing a high for the Olympians. He just wasn't really into it. Got went back to the boxing, and he hasn't looked back since. Which is too hard to do the boxing and the soccer. The time commitments, and I think he made the right choice. Oh, a solid right from Roman. And you see in round number six, Kubo, I think, perhaps is sensing that he has fallen far behind in this fight. Trying to stand and deliver, but the only problem is he's much more comfortable boxing. But throughout this night, as he has backed up, he has been suffocated by the pressure of Roman. I think Roman has really given an exhibition on being an action fighter with a real high ring IQ and real good discipline in terms of his head movement. When you're going to fight like this, you're going to have to be able to move your head and slip punches and create counter-punching opportunities. And another good right hand. Boy, Roman is really getting a lot of leverage on these shots. You can just start to see Kubo fold physically. Combination for Roman. I don't think he's ever thrown just one punch this fight. It's always two, three at a time. Smothering Kubo. It's another right, the Ooh. Japanese fighter. And I think Lane is starting to really fade from Kubo. I think that right hand stiffened up his back legs, Beto. That left hook also got him. That right hand is sending Kubo back against the ropes. Getting off of it is Kubo. Uh, trying to move around, but no no avail. Is Roman right there with him? Uh, Beto, this snowball is now becoming an avalanche on behalf of Danny Roman. He is starting to tag him at will, and for the first time, Kubo is starting to really bend. The question is, will he break? That bamboo is wilting. Less than a minute to go in the sixth round. Another left hook, followed by a right uppercut. A oh. solid right hand from Roman, and he keeps on coming. What a beautiful job of just methodical counter-punching and combination shots from Roman. Solid right hand from Roman. He's using both hands with ease, using both hands with power, as Sean Kubo is just basically playing defense here in the sixth round. He's throwing punches, but I think it's more to keep Roman off him, and it's not working. Eats another uppercut from Roman. Like a pit bull, he's just biting on, not letting go. Upstairs is Roman again. Solid sixth round for Danny, the babyface assassin. As he continues to do whatever he wants to the champion, Sean Kubo, who is just eating leather here in the sixth, and Roman getting stronger as the fight goes on. Which one is the champion right now? Because Danny Roman looks like it as he wobbles Kubo at the end of the sixth. Not a prize fight. I think it's become assault and battery. Danny Roman is not just in complete control. He is absolutely dominating halfway through. He is on the verge of a title shot unless that man right there, the defending champion Kubo, has something in his back pocket. The question is, does he, ha does he have the eraser? The deep waters that Kubo is in right now is because Danny Roman has been there. He's been tested. He's lost a couple fights. He's been dejected. Kubo has never faced adversity in his career until now, and he doesn't know what's hitting him. You can see it on his face. <laughs> uh, Beto, I think he knows what's hitting him. It's Danny Roman, time and time again, with both the left hand from the hook and from uppercut, and right crosses, which is varying in tempo and trajectory. It's been a beautiful performance by Danny Roman, the very definition of being a boxer puncher. Yeah, but this Danny Roman, I don't think anybody's seen. Look at the way he starts the seventh round. Roman sees blood on the face of Kubo. He's like the shark in water coming out and sees a chum. Where is his power? This isn't a fighter who two years ago was doing this. Well, I'll say one thing. You look at his technique, he is creating, getting great leverage and inertia from his feet up. You punch with your legs, you hit with your hands, and you take a look at how much momentum he is creating and the energy from his hip. Really, a textbook example of how to punch properly. And there he is, he drops him in the seventh, was going to the body, going to the body. Finally, Kubo goes down for the first time in the fight. 
and the champion is on his knees. Beto, I think at this point, we gotta ask this question. How tough is Kubo's corner willing to be? He's coming out strong. He's not covering up, and Roman's not gonna let him off the hook. Another right from Roman. Very game, a big heart. Kubo eats a left. And Danny Roman is locked in right now. He's locked in on the face of Shun Kubo. The champion has not looked comfortable at all tonight. And there you see Roman's corner urging him on. And Roman following through. Uppercut, a left hook again from Roman. How strong is this Roman fighter? But Kubo with a big heart. You know, the problem is with Kubo, though, he's throwing get off me punches. He wants Roman to get off of him, but they certainly aren't backing him up. I feel like he's throwing get off the arms. There's no punches being thrown from Kubo. His arms are heavy, his hands are heavy because they, the power brought in by Danny Roman into the corner again is Kubo. And you're wondering if how much Kubo's corner is going to let him take another right hand. I am just really impressed. Body shot. Oh, Steve, look at that. Yeah, Roman's technique is so short, straight, and crisp. It's very, very compact. There's very little wasted motion. And again, look at that momentum and power that he's creating from his leg up. Minute to go in the seventh. Kubo went down earlier in the round. He's finally getting a chance to breathe because Danny's letting him. While he's setting up. Oh. Yep, another right. Bad tilt's either been the right hand over the top or the left hook to the body or up the middle with the uppercut. Or all three at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it feels for Kubo right now. The line, I see three of them hit the one in the middle. Well, they're all hitting them right now. Another right from Roman. Finally misses for the first time in the round, it feels like. Beto, I really think Kubo's corner, they need to start the contest. Man. Do we let our guy take a beating? Because that's exactly what it's been from the early onset of this fight. Strong round from Danny Roman. There you see some tired legs. He's just throwing his hands, but he's not doing anything with them. Is the champion, Sean Kubo. Roman's not letting him hit. Look at that. Look at, look at what he's doing. Just flipping, sliding, catching, and countering. It's been a beautiful display by Danny Roman. Seven in the books, Danny Roman looking strong. There is less than one hundredth of an inch of motor oil protecting your car's engine. Friction and heat causes engine oil to experience thermal breakdown, weakening its ability to protect the engine and its parts. Lucas Heavy Duty Oil Stabilizer is specially formulated to resist thermal breakdown, protect vital engine parts, and extend the life of your engine. It also stops smoking, knocking, and oil consumption in worn engines. Lucas Heavy Duty Oil Stabilizer. Keep that engine alive. And the beat goes on for Danny Roman as he is administering a one-sided beating to the defending champion, Shun Kubo. It's been a two-fisted attack. He has not discriminated, Beto, between his left and his right hand. Bethel Durant, Steve Kim watching Danny Roman and the champion, Shun Kubo. But the man who looks like a champion right now isn't that fighter right there, the Jap Japan, the 122 pound. You see, left eye cut. Roman. The one thing that's striking, though, is in this fight, the first thing that counts is By my count, Danny Roman had 15 appearances at the Double Tree Hotel in Ontario. Steve, you always tell me you want to have a fighter who's seasoned. You want to have a fighter who's challenged, and Kubo hasn't been challenged. Roman in 2014, four wins. The following year, five wins. 16, four wins. This year is his third fight. Being active and learning inside the ring is huge for the development of these two fighters are the same age. I mentioned earlier that Danny Roman began his career in 2010 with the record of two one and one. This, this is not a guy that read Similac early on in his career. He knows what it's like to be on the B side and you're even hungrier, he said, when nobody knows you, when nobody gives you an opportunity. That fight against Lopez was supposed to be for Lopez to fight in the, in the title. Nuh-uh, Danny Roman knowing that he has to finish the fight strong as Kubo went down in the seventh. And you know, the Japanese crowd is trying to rally 
Kubo by sheer will. But, you know, the bottom line is he really has nothing to hold off Danny Roman, who is simply walking through his shots or catching and countering and coming back with much sharper punches. Looks like Kubo stuck in neutral as Roman is getting into his fourth gear. Kubo asked you for it, but no, no, no. It's all Danny Roman standing in the center of the ring controlling this fight. He's dictating how this fight should go. Right hand from Roman. Uppercut Roman. Splitting the guard of Roman. Left hook. That left hook has been quick and sneaky. No, also. it has been. And then he layers it with quick right hands. And you see him for a split second go into the southpaw stance. Kubo, you know, wait a minute. What are you doing? Switch on me, man. I'm trying to guard you one way. Now you're going the other way? Come on. Kubo, defensive. That's a defensive stance for yeah. the champion. Well, this is what he is. He wants to be a fighter that works the perimeter of the rim uh, of the ring, but from the very beginning of this fight, the airspace was breached, and Roman's been able to work right inside the pocket very, very comfortably. Oh, Danny Roman. I don't even want to ask that as a card, but sweep <laughs> Absolutely, and it's becoming a blowout. In fact, that last round, I had a 10-8. I think it is mathematically impossible at this stage for Kubo to win this fight without scoring a stop. And Danny Roman is leaving it to the hands of the judges, continuing to come strong. Here in the eighth with 30 seconds to go, Roman, another solid right hand. Methodical, going to the body, digging in deep, looking fresh. It's like he's getting stronger yeah. as the fight goes on. Beto, I don't think there's any doubt the emotion is tearing him. Oh, what a right drop, Kubo again! The second time in the fight that the champion has tasted the canvas. Here he is trying to collect all eight sec, all ten seconds. He's gonna beat the count. Yes, he does. And saved by the bell. What a shot from Daniel Roman. Kubo walks up and takes a deep breath as he is in deep water right now. Woo, the new blood for Ontario. The September 22nd card. You'll see Jose Roman, Ruben Villa very high on him. Michael Dutch over out of Midland, Texas. Ruben Torres, Rivera and Francisco. Make sure you guys go and get your tickets. Go to thompsonboxing.com. We'll see you there Friday night. And Shark Kubo, he thinks he's in Ontario right now. And Beto, this is the program that was developed that was very instrumental in nurturing Danny Roman as a professional fighter. And I wonder, does that corner start thinking about throwing in the towel? Their man has taken an absolute beating. Uh, I just don't know what would be the upside of letting him out for another round. They know if you're taking on a Thompson promoted fighter, they're gonna come and they're gonna bring it to you. It is dangerous. It is not a pushover fight, no matter who it is. You survive that ballroom, you can go anywhere. And right now, Danny Roman looking to take away the belt of Sean Kubo in Kyoto, Japan. The ninth round. It's scheduled for 12. Down goes Kubo twice in the fight so far. Once in the seventh, once in the eighth. And Kubo has nothing on those punches. Well, I think Danny Roman with those body shots, continuous left hooks, has simply taken the air out of that balloon. Snapping that jab is Roman. Circling his prey is Roman. Kubo moving around, trying to get away from the fighter. He smothered him from the opening bell. Opening bell. Spent almost two weeks in Japan. Got to Japan, bad accommodations, had to switch hotels. I thought they were messing with him, but he had to overcome a little bit. And here he is now. Looking strong in the ninth. And Kubo is in survival mode. Steve, you're right. How much longer will his corner let him go as he eats an uppercut? Roman. And again, I right think, hand from Roman. And Beto, I talked about the snowball that turned into an avalanche, and he is just simply swarming Kubo now. Moving around with that waist, looking strong as Danny Roman. He's in front of his corner. That man in the yellow has that towel. That's the corner of Kubo. And Danny Roman doing whatever he wants. Staggering the champion is over. The That's referee it. has jumped in. There is a new 122-pound champion in the WBA, and that is Danny. Roman! And he was the absolute world warrior today. And you look at Alex Campanovo, certainly ecstatic. Third time is the charm. They've gone to Japan twice. They fell short against Ozumi Hasegawa and Shinsuke Yamanaka. But Danny Roman has just absolutely dominated tonight. And we have a new champion in the sport of boxing. The referee jumped in, saw way too much. And Shankubo was game. 
but in first title defense, she loses the belt to Danny, the babyface assassin, Roman. He was certainly game, and you can see the damage being done to him. Uh, there's no questioning that young man's courage. He was going to go out on his shield, but from the very, very early stages of this fight, he was certainly outgunned in terms of punching power, and he gets lifted up. He was a real technician tonight, showed real ring savvy and a very high ring IQ. Beto, that was a complete professional performance. What a moment right there with Eddie Gonzalez, his manager and trainer. They've known each other since they were this, Danny Roman was a kid. They went away from each other for a little bit, and then they came back, and here as professionals, they win a title on the road in Japan, the sportsmanship between the two fighters, Roman and Shun Kubo. Hey. This has to be a great moment for that man right there, Alex Campanobo, and the gentleman, Ken Thompson, the years that they put into this business. And they just really developed this career time after time, year after year, putting a lot of fights into this. And then you got to give the fighter credit. When it's all said and done, they're the ones who have to stand and deliver. And I thought he came up with a sterling performance today. I don't know if he's the best 122-pounder in the world based on this, but I do want to see him fight every other guy in the division. What a complete performance. You persevere. You believe in yourself when others don't. Things don't go your way. We see too many fighters now that have 22 fights, and they're 22-0, and they have 22 knockouts against nobodies. Danny Ramon has earned every single thing tonight, and he goes back home to Southern California with a WBH belt on his... Oof. Well, you know what? I think we now can call him Mel Gibson. He is oh, the road really? warrior because in two fights against two undefeated fighters now, Adam Lopez and now Sean Kubo, he has scored, I believe, four knockdowns and two stoppages. That is an impressive campaign for any young fighter. Didn't knock him down the third time, but the referee jumped in there. Great stoppage by the referee. It was only a matter of time as Kubo went down to the seventh, went down to the eighth, and in the ninth, referee jumped in. And you replays from tonight, and you see him staggering around, and that's the moment when the belt changed hands. And it goes to the, around the waist of Danny Roman. Oh. Danny Roman uh, is becoming a real puncher. Uh, it, the record may not show up, but you look at that technique and the fundamental grounding that he has, and he's going to come home with a belt around his waist. What an occasion for Thompson Boxing and the babyface hey, assassin. Very game, Sean Kubo. There you see Isaac Zate, Mr. Thompson. Yeah. That's about the most emotion you're going to get at yeah. Danny Roman. I mean, that right there is him doing a cartwheel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't show much emotion, but the respect from the fans in Japan. And he opened up some eyes of the bo Japan boxing family. We see the Mechanico Tomeda. And uh, what a moment to go around and just to go in the backyard. He said that the biggest venue he's ever fought in is the jacket out of Team Roman. He began the year as an unknown West Coast fighter that maybe some people didn't even believe was a real prospect. Nine, ten months later, he is a world champion and certainly one of the elite 122 pounders in the world. Alex Campanova wiping the brown on his face. I don't know who fought. Was it Daniel or was it Alex? We know Sean Kubo fought, and you see the wear on his face. And the way he's walking, those body shots must have been what got to him also. Uh, I want to... uh, everybody that's here, my family, of course, they, they're always supporting me, my friends, my fans, and uh, my promoter too, and uh, my whole friends, and everybody that got to see this fight, uh, hopefully you liked it, uh, we'll be stronger next defending the title, it's even stronger than now. あの、家族、そしてファンの皆さん、で、友達すべてに今の喜びを伝えたいと思っています。次ももっと強くなって帰ってきますので、皆さん応援よろしくお願いいたします。最後に久保選手にメッセージをお願いします。Please give the it was just my night, and, but he, nothing to take away from uh, Kubo. He's a really great fighter. He took everything he gave me, everything he had, but it, it was just my night. あの、こういうふうに試合をしてくださったことに大変感謝をしています。彼は本当に素晴らしいファイターだと思います。ありがとうございました。
見事新チャンピオンに輝きましたダニエル・ローマン選手でした As all the cool kids say with their hashtag and the new that it is Danny Roman and the new WBA 122 pound champion takes away from that man Sean Kubo oh what a fight though and there you see the emotion still inside the ring you got to pose for the picture from decomp as Danny Roman there is the smile from Danny Roman what a moment for him the emotions going over him Here you see it. You post for as many pictures. Hey, well, how's the photographer not even mm -hmm. taking the picture? Look at him. The photographer's got to get in there. You got to get the mix in there. There you see Danny. There you go. Get everybody out of the way. Take it by yourself, Danny Roman. You've earned it. You are the new WBA 122-pound champion. And with that belt, Beto, he now goes into a different tax bracket. I think within due time, he will be in line for some significant paydays within this division. He is now a bona fide player. What a moment for Danny Roman and la familia Duran Roman desde Guerrero, Mexico. Big family sign, family oriented. And for everybody involved with Thompson Boxing and my partner Steve Kim and everybody on the production tonight, thank you for watching and congratulations, as they say. And the new WBA 122 pound champion is Danny Roman.